Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know y'all didn't think I was gonna make y'all wait another week for a Fantastic Four episode. No, I am not. We're gonna start calling these episodes. I know you didn't think I was gonna make you guys wait. This is arguably the greatest moment in the history of Marvel Comics, I would say it is the greatest moment. The only one that might be better than this is when Black Panther gets the Infinity Gauntlet and, and Jonathan Hickman's Avengers, the New Avengers, and when the when the cosmic entities get destroyed by the Beyonders and the last ride of Thor and Hyper Okay, so this is a really cool moment. It's not the best, but it's like a really cool moment. There's it's, it's a really, really amazing moment. All right, check this out. So here's the thing, right? This picks up with Franklin and Valeria arriving from the future into the past in order to basically save the day. Now, as soon as Franklin gets here, the Celestials freak right like these mad celestials start freaking out now a lot of you guys were asking in the comment section why don't the regular celestials from the main marvel universe show up to fight the mad celestials i don't know who cares because if they had done that we wouldn't have gotten this amazing moment here it's comics roll with it so here's the thing the celestials immediately freak out because they scan franklin richards and we get the exact same response that we got when they analyzed the younger franklin richards in the last video that we did right human mutant anomaly beyond omega classification again reality distortion universal shaper galactic constant danger danger doom right here's the thing Franklin Richards is what we refer to as a universal constant, right? A reality distortion guy. He is a universal shaper. That's the role of Franklin. This is the reason why the Fantastic Four story by Jonathan Hickman and why we'll probably just kind of release this remastered Fantastic Four along with the remastered Avengers and New Avengers. It's why it's so important. It's why at the end of Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars, you saw Franklin Richards basically giving form to universes because that's what he does. Franklin Richards used the power of the Molecule Man, which was basically the power of the beyonders to recreate universes and then reed richards was telling franklin what to put in those universes since he remembered everything so literally franklin was building whole realities from scratch that's the role that franklin plays now as soon as the celestials realize what's going on franklin waves his hand the celestials are gone now here's the crazy thing about this i know it's nuts right it's absolutely nuts you do kind of have a conversation between nathaniel and franklin and valeria because remember nathaniel was sent back here before franklin and valeria arrived and so when they kind of asked the question you know like whether was there anything that we didn't account for anything that happened that we didn't expect that we need to account for here because remember cascading changes to the time sheet which we'll talk about here in a second that all that really happened is that the gray reed richards the one that we saw at the end of the last video he sacrificed himself to save everybody else but that was basically it now one of the things valeria says is that things looked pretty sketchy when the revision wave hit the 45th century but somehow franklin was able to pull it together here's how that works and this is one of the cool things about this you will likely see this in the marvel cinematic universe when it comes to king dynasty and secret wars so this is something to keep in the back of your head so the way this works and the easiest way to explain it it's like a meteor hitting the earth right when a meteor hits the earth it creates a giant tidal wave and that tidal wave spreads out in all directions now the idea of basically this revision wave the point of contact the moment when the, the revision wave was initiated was basically when franklin went back in time visited his younger self and then gave the message to valeria and woke up the powers of his younger self the reason why that's so important is because in this example of a meteor hitting the earth frankly going back in time that's the meteor hitting the planet the tidal wave moving out in every direction that's the change to the time stream that's happening as a result of franklin going back into the past now there are a few other things that caused that as well reed going in and meeting the council different things like that but we'll talk about that here in a minute because that becomes a very important point but of course reed asked franklin what happened to the celestials you just destroyed them with a wave of your hand can you do something like that and the response of franklin is no i didn't kill them i sent them to the inner sphere of a local gas giant right to the local star it'll confuse them momentarily but they will be back and this will not work again so i'm going to have to find a way to permanently destroy these guys now there is a bit of a moment where you have franklin kind of talking to reed and saying it's been too long i missed you dad and that's going to be the crux of all of this it's one of the things that i want you to keep in mind the focus behind everything that we're going to see over the course of this is a son trying to save his father that's all this is going to be and that's what made jonathan hickman's fantastic four run so beautiful was franklin trying to save his dad now at that point adult franklin meets with his younger self and he asks him are you ready and the younger franklin says yes i saved everything up just like you asked just like you showed me now of course when when he asks is it going to be enough the response of adult franklin is i hope it will but i don't know for sure now here's the thing man Anybody who hasn't read Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four, Franklin's got an ace up his sleeve, and it comes in one of the most baller moments 
ever in the history of Marvel Comics. Oh my God, it's so amazing. But the Mad Celestials arrive. Franklin shows up. Boom! Goes right head to head with these guys. And let me tell you something, man. This battle is fierce because it's Franklin Richards from the future fighting a handful of mad celestials. Guys with the power of gods. These dudes are next level. Now, while this battle is going on, like Susan and Reed ask Nathaniel, can Franklin defeat these celestials? And Nathaniel simply says, just Franklin against all three celestials? No. But hold hope. Franklin will find a way. He'll find one because he has to. And when Reed asks why, the response to Nathaniel is, I have seen hundreds of iterations of this day. Reed lived it countless times. I've interceded, I've manipulated, I've done everything I could to produce a new outcome, and my every effort has failed. You see, son, this was the day that all your sins caught up to you. It's the day that you died. But Franklin, figured it out and he wouldn't have it he simply wouldn't stand for it every boy deserves a father now here's the cool thing about this franklin facing off against these celestials is nuts because one of them he annihilates on the spot while he's attacking one celestial he's attacked from behind by another he literally flies into the sky punches him in the face and blows the celestial's head apart right so one down two to go and he comes out and this this is let me tell you something man 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 let me tell you something, man, let me tell you something. So, so, so. it's just god it's like one of the best moments ever right because he comes flying out of this celestial's head like a like he looks eight kinds of piss and i gotta say man it's one of the best looking moments ever with his character right so then reed asked the question how did all this happen and the response to nathaniel is you walked through the bridge. That's how all this happened. It started when you entered the bridge. Now, initially, Susan Storm's question is the exact same as Valeria. Well, what if he didn't? And the response to Nathaniel is the same thing he told Valeria. No, there are universal constants, things that always happen. You always walk through the bridge. You always meet that council. You always meet all those use. With them, you always build suns. You save universes. With them, you always wake the mad space gods and they always destroy the council. I always helplessly watched, even though walking away, you always paid the price for being a part of it. I watch and there's nothing that I can do. And he says, but that's how it is for any parent, isn't it? You do everything you can, you do your best, and then one day you're finished and your children have simply become who they are going to be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment this is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the moment that we as comic book fans have been jonesing for for the longest time. Anybody who has read Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four knows what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four, you read it now, you need to make sure you go buy it. This this, mo this moment right here, this is why we're remastering this whole thing because the way we did it before sucked. It was not very good before. We're making it better now. Here's the thing. Franklin realizing he cannot destroy both of the Celestials by himself ends up taking the power of his younger self. That's one thing to keep in mind. This whole time, he's just been using his own power. He takes the power of his younger self, he channels it into a ball and just shouts, rise and while that's going on nathaniel is like this is who your son will be reed this is who he is throughout all of space and time the devourer of worlds has had many heralds franklin has had only one and franklin's just like rise and takes that energy and throws it into galactus and he's like to me my galactus and he resurrects galactus from the dead son man is man let me tell you something man man is, just, oh, man is one of the best moments ever one of the absolute best moments ever in the history of Marvel Comics. And so literally what you get here is Franklin Richards and Galactus annihilating these guys in one of the best moments ever, right? Because like one of the Celestials comes after Galactus, Galactus is like, come, come, come fail me! Like destroys this guy on the spot, like rips his body in half. And like while that's happening, like you literally have like, like Nathaniel telling everybody because Susan has no idea what's going on. She's like, I still don't understand. This doesn't make any sense because you think that a wife of the, the smartest man in the world, arguably, would be able to understand all this stuff because she spent so much time with him. But literally Nathaniel says, all of this came from Reed joining the council being part of all those reeds trying to make better worlds he left them because he refused to make the sacrifice each of them had made he refused to abandon those he loved for the greater cause they put the well-being of the multiverse ahead of the few which were their families it was a logical rational choice but it was the wrong one franklin was the one 
who figured it out. The council built suns and saved universes. They constructed great machines for good works, but because of their choice, there was one thing they were not capable of. There was one thing Reed could create that they could not, that he was able to create Franklin. And that's the important thing behind all this. It's why I say the entirety, and that's why it's so beautiful, the entirety of, of Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four is literally nothing other than a son trying to save his father. That's literally all it is. It's nothing but that. The entirety of the story comes down to this moment, which is Franklin trying to engineer things in such a right way that it will lead to him being able to return to the past, save the life of Reed Richards, and save the day to keep his family and everybody on Earth alive. And so that's the crazy thing because Galactus killed that, that other Celestial by ripping him in half. One left, right? This alternate reality version of Arishan, the judge, that literally you have Galactus that punches a hole through this guy or shoots a hole through him, Franklin flies into him and then destroys him. But in the midst of it all, it looks like Franklin is killed in the blast, right? Literally, Nathaniel says, look up at the life you made, Reed. Look at the one who would sacrifice himself so that all might live. And then we get this just beautiful monologue, right? Because with the death of Eris and the judge, it's just this massive explosion. We get this beautiful monologue where it says, and for a moment, there were two sons that day. They marked the sky victorious. The earth stood, her heroes the difference. They had endured together, old friends, new friends, and the generation to follow. They watched until the second sun flickered out. The light extinguished, the sign of the abandoned, the left behind, and the lost. But it also meant a second chance. It signaled a new day, a future regained. For if we live, there is hope. And if we hope, then there is tomorrow. And if tomorrow, then forever. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Franklin Richards came back from the future to the past, resurrected Galactus from the dead, and killed the Mad Celestials. Arguably the greatest moment ever in the history of Marvel Comics, and absolutely the best moment ever in the history of the Fantastic Four. I don't care what anybody says. And so what we do here is we pick up with an epilogue, that where you have Franklin, like the adult Franklin who's still there, you've got kid Franklin, and so on and so forth. One of the biggest mistakes that Reed realized he had made is he had never really embraced his son as a son, which is to say, he always saw Franklin as this kid who was godly powerful. And instead of treating him the way a son or a father would treat a son, that he treated him as this kid that needed to be kept safe, protected from his own abilities, which is why Reed put mental blocks in the mind of Franklin after that old Fantastic Four story where Franklin basically turned himself into Jesus. Yes, that happened. Yes, it was amazing. It was like the craziest display of Franklin's power up to that point. But in this instance, he actually goes the other direction and says, it's okay to be afraid, Franklin, because Franklin's terrified of jumping off, right? Like literally Reed is trying to teach him how to fly, trying to teach him to use his powers. And he says, it's okay okay to be afraid, Franklin. It's okay to fail. But to say that you're not even willing to try, that's unacceptable. And so Franklin responds and says, okay, I'll do my best. And so when Reed asks him, are you ready? Franklin says, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And so Reed says, good, now fly. And for the first time in his entire life, Franklin Richards flies into the sky. That is just, this is a beautiful moment, an amazing story. It's not the end. We still got more left, but it's a ridiculously awesome moment in this story. The, the, just, just is the greatest moment ever in the history of the Fantastic Four. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all next week. Peace.